I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Pleasant evening. We are back. This is your ministry, our ministry, following the Blueprint Ministry. And this is your program, Youth and Issue. I am your youth leader and pastor, Pastor William Lecky, and I have with me this evening... <laughs> Dear Mara Walker. All right, we have Sister Diamara Walker, and now I'll turn to our panelists this evening, and they will be introducing themselves. Okay, good evening, viewers. My name is Lichelle Smart. And my name is Jenny O'Campbell. And I am Michelle Smart. All right, so this evening we have a smart room. <laughs> All right, we have a smart room, and we will be dealing with the issue of careers. All right, and this is very important, especially for the youth. Before we begin, let us pray. Loving Father, eternal God, we thank you for this opportunity to labor with you in the gospel for the cause of salvation and eternity. As we discuss this evening, may your name be glorified and honored, and may others be blessed. May their minds be clear on this issue as we go forward. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Alright, so I, I remember one of the questions that is asked, you know, by teachers when you used to go to school, when you start, well, it want to be primary school or high school. But this is a favorite question. What do you want to do when you get older? Well, that is what we are going to be talking about this afternoon. Now, as we look at questions, we want to start with our first one. Um, you know, I've been told, I've heard it, people have said it many times, especially to those who advocate that peculiar truth, that, you know, there are extremes in present truth ministry. And one of that is, um, you're so heavenly minded. Have you ever heard it? That you're no earthly good. And what we want to ask this afternoon is, is that true? Does that statement even make sense? What is the statement saying? When it says you're heavenly minded, you're no earthly good. Is it that your only focus is on heaven? You don't care about what's happening on the earth? Or your only plans are for heaven, so you're worthless to anything, oblivious to anything that's happening here on earth. Or rather, you have nothing to offer the world you, um, that's headed to hell, and you don't want to partake and have no influence in it, so you will not participate in it or be connected with it. Are these the thoughts that are running in the minds of people when they say you are so heavenly minded that you're, you're no earthly good? Now, before I turn to the panelists for some discussion, because I know they're rearing and ready to go, let's turn to um, our first text, Ecclesiastes chapter 9. We turn our Bibles to... Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and we read verse 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 10 and the Bible says, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. We want to start with that text. We have other texts to look at, but we want to open the discussion right here as we turn to our panelists about this idea, so heavenly minded, you're no earthly good. And it also in reference to the text that we just read. What are your thoughts? Well, you know, it's, it's all about understanding what it means. Because heavenly minded, no earthly good what does it mean to be heavenly minded and what do you consider to be earthly good right because heavenly minded sounds to me and from what i know by reading the bible you know your minds are on the things of god connected right and you contribute spiritual development and life 
for the world to come, which is the world that God is going to give to us. Isaiah told us about the new heavens and new earth, right? Specifically referring to character, character development, earthly good, no earthly good. That's, that's not an aspect that you are no earthly good. It's just that what you're aspiring for, your ambitions, your thoughts, your affections are set on the things of heaven, not on the things of the earth that would gratify self-exaltation so that you, you know, you would get a feel or, for instance, the Maslow theory that tells you that you are, you climb the ladder to be self-actualized. You're not seeking for self to be glorified, you're seeking for Christ to be glorified. Mm -hmm. yes, Indeed. <laughs> And to, and, to, and to that, I'm sure you'd have heard this statement that says that we should live a little heaven down here, mm -hmm. right? So if you're just going to be heavenly minded and no earthly good, that is simply saying that you're only focusing on the things around and not basically doing anything. You're just waiting until Jesus to come, which would basically be going contrary to your own belief Indeed. because you're called for service, you're called yes. for a life work. So therefore, you have to be doing things and just being heavenly minded will let you know that you're supposed to be doing early good, going about helping others and so forth, Absolutely. right? So you can't just have one and not the other because just being heavenly minded, you must be early good. In immediately, because look at Jesus. He is our great example, right? Jesus was here. Where was his mind? Doing the will of his Father which is in heaven. It is clear. Yet, what did he do here while he was here? He was not just sitting around. My father, I'm thinking about you. No. He was literally everything he did, everything he was about, the way he looked, the way he dressed, the way he spoke, it was for the good of all mankind. He came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. He did not just sit around, laze around as what we would call today idlers. No. He was active, active in labor. Michelle? I and if we say we are true Christians, right, we must be followers of Christ. Now, if we are looking to go to heaven, which is a lovely place that all of us want to go, how is it that we're going to be here on earth and keep such a message or such a lovely um, Jesus to ourselves? We have to share it with others. So while we're looking forward to going to heaven, we still have to be mindful that we have to still live down here as Christians. We have to live down here as a people of God so others see us can be led to glorify our Father which is in heaven. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Sister Walker, mm -hmm. I'm hearing the young people and they're vibrant and they're correct that we have to labor yes. and we have to work. And I'm hearing a lot of missionary work. And, and let's just put some balance to that as well. It doesn't mean that we won't go out and work as others work mm -hmm. and even get paid and pay our bills and so We are yes. also a part of that. But we are not so caught up right. that, that even now many are worried about will I have a job and mm -hmm. they're chasing after the riches of this world. As a matter of fact, the text we read in Ecclesiastes 9.10, this text already debunks one factor mm -hmm. concerning yes. the first question, which is when you know the truth, you're supposed to stop doing any kind of work to simply wait till Jesus comes. Because the text says, whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it well. And 2 Thessalonians, this is another text for you. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 10, it says, For even when we were with you, Paul says, This we commanded you, that if any would not work, huh, neither should he eat. You know, so there are two sides to this, because you have persons who mar what God wants us to do. They will grab onto what they think is truth and will stop everything and are really no earthly good to anybody. And they'll say, yes, Jesus is coming soon. So they'll just stop. They're not evangelizing. They're not doing anything. And they become almost like begging after people to look after them while they wait on Jesus to come. And then you have other persons who say, no, I can't just be heavenly minded because I have things to do. And so they, they miss the balance that you're supposed to have yes. as children of God. And that's what we want, a balance. No extreme. No, no extreme extremes. to the left, no extreme to the right. As a matter of fact, let's go here. Even in the perfect world, yes. God gave labor. And we yes. see that in Genesis 2.15 when the Lord says, And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to do what? Dress yes. it and to keep it 
dress and keep energy expended work so this idea that if you really believe that Jesus is coming very soon and he is then that means inactivity just sitting and looking in the heavens this is false this 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 opposite um, yes. this is a false statement and rather the opposite is true because even in the book of Acts the angel says why stand the here, here is gazing uh, yes. just looking up into heaven this same Jesus that you have seen gone he will come again okay. in like fashion let us turn our attention to this this chapter in Matthew 25 which is very ideal don't you think for yes. for this time and we start at verse 40 in Matthew 25 it says for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods and unto one this is verse 15 he gave five talents that's five to another two and to another one to every man according to his several ability and straightway he took his journey uh, then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five so that would be what a hundred percent increase yes. all right and likewise he that had received two he also gained other two that's another hundred percent increase but he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid is Lord's money mm -hmm. all right so already in verse 14 we see responsibility right. and 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 ownership right and who does our <coughs> talents and abilities belong to God right God. and so if we have them we are to do use them and do his, his work. work and once they've been given to us we are responsible and accountable so then we can't just be sitting idly and waiting on Jesus because we will have to give an account for the things he has given us that we are supposed to use for the building up of his kingdom. All right. Anyone know the root definition for traded in verse 15? Yes. Um, so trade would have speaking extensively to do something, job, mm -hmm. right? Meaning you're putting in something to get something out. Mm -hmm. You know, when I'm... When I, when, if you look further at, at that, it, and based on the context that it was used in as well, it would speak to ministry, mm -hmm. right? You're laboring in ministry so that you would put in and you would expect to get out. You reap, you sow, you reap, right? So it, it means clearly occupation. It means labor. It means that you're working. It means then you're doing something that you ought to be doing because mm -hmm. you have the resource to trade and you've traded, so now you're giving a returns on that which you have put in. Amen. And somebody explained to me verse 18 because I think verse 18 is critical in understanding the whole idea of careers. Well, for verse 18, you know, um, verse 18 specifically says, uh, just give me a second, I'm going to read it over again. Mm -hmm. uh, just a moment. So verse 18 says, But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. Right? And if we look at career, you know, trade, hid, the Lord would have given you a talent. He would have blessed you with something, you know, that you can use to do the work. You know, they have this thing, um, it's a Jamaican proverb, I don't know if it's elsewhere, where they said, Teach a man to fish and not just give him a fish because you give him a fish he's dependent on you mm -hmm. but you teach him to fish he can now go out there and fish for himself and he can use that to help himself but when you have been taught that trade or that uh, skill and you still come tomorrow or the day after mm -hmm. to to get from me it means then that you are you're not ambitious right you're wasting your time you're wasting the substance and the talent you, you know god would not do that for us you know um when you look at christ's object lessons it tells us specifically that to every man god has given according to his several ability the talents are not proportioned right so he gives to us based on what he thinks we can manage he's not going to give you more than what you can bear so if he gives you one it means a one you could manage exactly. put the one to use and by continuing in it you will learn more 
Right. 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 And so. that, that all reach the same development at the same time. Mm -hmm. Not all of us will have the same abilities and capabilities. Therefore, if we just have one talent or one ability that is saying that we are not to bury that, God expects mm -hmm. us to improve upon it, yes. to add to it, to go about doing whatever whatever our life calling is. Yes. And what we find out is that a lot of persons, they don't appreciate their talent or their ability or their capabilities. And so they will put that aside because they're looking on someone else's ability yes. or talent. And to say that what I have is not good enough to do what God is calling me to do. So therefore, we have to ensure that we basically go to God and ask Him what, what? our talents or abilities yes. are and improve upon that because God is coming back and he's going to ask us basically what we did with our talents and we can't afford to say that we buried it. Yes, right. because he, re mm -hmm. he requires it off your hand. He requires exactly, it. exactly. <laughs> yes, I, I just wanted to add that, you know, every good and perfect gift comes from God and therefore of a truth we really can't bury that which God has given to us not. and he in Proverbs 6 verse 6 he says um, go to the ant he sluggard so we must learn, learn. to work your learn to use our right. talent so that it can be of benefit not just to us but to the work of God because that is what it was given to us for so if we bury these talents that we have then the work will not be done and God is waking us up even in this time that whatever talents we have, whatever means we have as we look at the close of time, it must be used to reach people. It must be used to glorify his name and to let people know that Jesus is coming soon and you yes. must be ready. And, exactly. and, you know, one of the things as we move on in the interest of time, I want to point out quickly was that when you look at verse 16 and 17, verse 16 speaks that the one with five, increase to five which yes. is 100 percent increase yes. the one with two increase to two yes. which is still a hundred percent increase in the world the one with two and five might be comparing each other right so the one with the five might say i increased more than you but that's not how god looks at it when god come he's gonna still say to the two a hundred percent increase and to the five a hundred percent right. increase because yes. he gave them the text says gifts according to their several abilities right. yes and so we should not be competing we should not be comparing. We and, and that's what the world does. It, it competes and it fights. And, and, and that's what we who are heavenly minded will not be doing as yes. we labor. Yes. As we and, labor. I, and just to add to that, even as we go into this new school year, especially your persons will be doing their last year in grade 11 and so on, there's this spirit of competition because those who want to be have the big careers are like yes you're going to pass and those who are but, oh, you're not going to do anything so that spirit of competition and so we always have to remember that what God has given us he will bless once we use it for his glory regardless of what it is and we don't even have to read from the verse from 19 uh, 19 verse to verse 30 from the same Matthew 25 because it's basically just talking about how God responded to those who had what? given those gifts and talents to and we clearly noticed that he he um blesses those that use them wisely and yes. what did he do with the last person who just hid hid took there it, took it from him cast him out yes. exactly and so it's important that we recognize that as those who believe present truth we're not to sit down idle and say yes jesus is coming it's we are to work, work for him and whatever avenue whatever sphere he puts us in we work for his glory whatever it may yes. be carpenter doctor whatever it may whatever be we right. work for god he is our ultimate employer mm -hmm. yes, right? yes indeed. um to just look quickly at great controversy page 82 it reads and i just want us to kind of ponder it a little it says another evil against which the reformer waged long and resolute battle was the institution of the orders of the mendicant mendicant friars these friars swarmed in england casting a blight upon the greatness and prosperity of the nation industry education morals all felt the withering influence the monk's life of idleness and beggary was not only a heavy drain upon the resources of the people, but it brought useful labor into contempt. The youth were demoralized and corrupted. Many years ago, 
I heard of a lady who said that her gift, her spiritual gift from God, was poverty. And I stopped and I heard and I was like, yeah. Now, I was young in the church, so when I heard it, you know, you kind of have to, you don't say no straight away, you kind of stop for a reason and think about it and say, something about that don't sound right, you know? The Bible says that the poor will all, always be with us, but for your gift and bliss, gift to be poverty doesn't seem, mm -hmm. it doesn't seem right, so you understand? And what I want to make clear is that when we go out and say, Jesus is coming again, get ready, get ready, it doesn't mean that you stop and just look up and everything else around you just broke to drop. We have a work to do. And if you rightly understand the truth of God, you're working even harder than the man who's in the world. Mm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Indeed. And so so the gospel, there is biblical proof um, refuting the statement we started with of being no earthly good. Mm -hmm. uh, a matter of fact, in Acts chapter 18, if we turn our attention there, from verse 1 it reads, And after these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately from, come from Italy, with his wife Priscilla. Because that Claudius had, you know, commanded that all Jews depart yes. from Rome. And he came unto them. And verse 3 of Acts 18 says, And because he was of the same craft, there it is, he abode with them. This is Paul and Priscilla and Aquila and wrought for by their occupation they were what tent makers we're talking about paul who did so much writing to the new testament this man mm -hmm. doing all that gospel yes still had an occupation mm -hmm. made tent sewed it together and verse 4 of acts 18 is crucial verse 4 said and he reasoned in the synagogue every sabbath and persuaded the jews and the greeks so i want to ask the panel while we work and labor on earth and our goal is heaven, still, while we labor, whatever feel and whatever we are doing, what is ultimately our main goal? Our main goal or our main focus should be evangelism because it doesn't matter the line of work that you're in. Your ultimate aim should always be ministry because it is not only service to God, yes, but, but also him. service to others around. So when you look at it, for example, you will have a ministry, but that ministry's aim is supposed to be what? Evangelism. And you can have a business, but what is that aim for the business? It should also be evangelism. So if you're going to say that you want to be a missionary personally just have a mindset that oh it's just a pastor bible work or culprit culprit and these are the only persons that are supposed to be doing evangelism but that's not true if you're an administrator how can i use that specific field in order to evangelize in order to you know and i've heard where a, a story where a person basically he said that he wanted to be a landscaper Right, and what did he do? He went around to different schools and beautified the place, and he placed different texts, you know. And you can also put signs where you have the commandments and so on. Yes. That's a part of evangelism. So, whatever area you're in, you should actually use that as a form of missionary work. Amen. And, Indeed. Because and I, go ahead. Go ahead. And I agree a hundred percent. You know, because just giving an experience, because even in my field of work, you know, at the doctor's office where I am, um, several times individuals would come in and, you know, they'll suffer from a lot of different types of ailments and so on. But, you know, just to be able to share with them what God has done through the medical missionary work and even the herbal stuff that we do, you know, they appreciate these things and we find it's an easy way to re really reach people because when they will not just listen to you, just come out and just give them the Bible as is. But when you're able to reach them through their health, you realize that, yeah, they will sit and they will listen to what you have to say. So of a truth, whatever we do, whatever field we find ourselves in, once it's according to God's will, we must use that career as a way of witnessing of a way of evangelizing so that people can come to a knowledge of the truth about the God we actually serve. Amen. Amen. So everything we do should give God glory because he is our first employer 
and will be the last. Yes. Amen. 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 Yes. All, right. All right, so we're at question two now that says, I want to be the best in the field of work that I choose. After all, don't we have to occupy until Jesus comes? Now, I have heard this, <coughs> even in my own experiences. Girl, you have to occupy till Jesus comes. Just go on and do what you have to do, you know, but balance. Balance. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Where does that statement come from? It comes from Luke 19, verse 11 to 14, and it reads, And as they heard these things, he, he added and spake a parable, because he was nigh to Jerusalem, and because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. He said, therefore, A certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds, and he said unto them, Occupy till I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. Please respond to us. You know, this is a very wonderful position. And, uh, and if we don't understand what Jesus requires of us, we will misunderstand his mission. Mm -hmm. And we will then become lazy and do nothing. Because Jesus was not telling us to do nothing. He was not telling them to, you know, take the money and just eat and enjoy and have a merry time. That was not it. Occupy till I come means to work. You, they were, firstly, they were servants. Servants are not supposed to sit around doing nothing. Well, who would you then be serving, right? So you ought to be doing something. So when he come when he comes the house must be kept clean you know whatever the animals are that are whatever responsibility that you have you are to give an increase there must be an increase on it because it, it is clearly shown that jesus the great master he said when he looked upon the people moved with compassion talking about matthew 9 now just a little shift here just to put a context you know um 35 36 38 he said the harvest is plentiful but the laborers are few so the, 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 the in this context the servants here are the labor you have a lot of work to do you have so much work to do that you cannot be lazy still. you can't sit exactly. still and you even need more help and even if you look at it even before we were born right god has a special plan for us yes. so therefore if god has a special plan for us and if he well he is not if he is our creator therefore he would basically made us in a way that we will have different talents and capabilities so we have to go back to him and ask him to help us to show us what are our talents and capabilities and once we know that then we'll improve upon that whatever area that would we would find ourselves in they would use that now to build his kingdom because no matter what it is the main mission that would have stated before must be evangelism mm -hmm. and in doing it as paul would have done it is also yes. to help us to um, support ourselves because god is not expecting us to just sit around and and god is we are not foolish right god is a, a wise person and he expects his people to also be wise so therefore whatever area we are in is expecting us to be wise to use our talents and capabilities to further the work and we would have seen where a lot of persons would have disregarded that and end up in a field or an area that is not doing that. So they would have wasted their, their, talent. their time wasted because their when you look back at it, persons sometimes they are in their 60s or 70s and when they reflect on their yeah. life, they would have seen where they basically, oh my, I wish I could go back and do this because now they are discovering some things that they basically it's love to do when it's, late. When it's really late. You know, right. I, I, I have always been laboring in the field of evangelism when I came in the church at the age of, of 16, but I have never until now been fully dedicated to mission. I mean, I was always working and, and doing some preaching, going to school, and do, but now there's nothing else. There's no other work, I'm not going to school and doing anything else, but full mission. And when people think, say, you just have to do God work and you're lazy. I don't know what that is. Mm. Because now I cannot find any time. Now I have to be praying to God to lengthen the days. And yet still the days are shortened. You are laboring plus tax. Yes. Yes. So when somebody mm. said those that are do missionary and so them lazy. And then I know 
they are not doing missionary work yes. because they would never make that statement exactly. and and verse 14 of Luke 19 mm -hmm. is critical when it says but his citizens hated, hated him, him and sent a message after him saying we will not have this man reign over us it's very yes. interesting because this parable is a repeat of the previous one that was read yes. but with added insight the ruler who is God is resented by his servants those who are to be doing his bidding and carrying out his will right or yes. occupying till he come isn't to go about own business neglecting whose we are everything we do instead we are to be about what our father's, father's business. business if we will believe that he is our king what he requires of us will be important even mm -hmm. in labor, labor and career and choice and time is against us but we must discuss we can't just run on what does it mean to occupy till I come? You know why I have to ask this? Back to the panelists, um, Kerry, because people use it to cover yes. so many things. Um, yes, Jesus is coming, but yes. occupy till I come. Yes. And they are running after the world, chasing after the world. And as a, as a preacher and a pastor and a shepherd, I have preached on this before. I had to go and study it. And I realized it has a different meaning from what people put to it. But before I even say that let's turn to our brilliant panelists over the smart corner there and and what do you what 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 does it really mean when jesus says occupy till i come you know um so indeed um it needs to be fleshed out what does it really mean to occupy till christ come well we know that to occupy means that to busy oneself that means you will be working occupying where cannot just be anywhere even though the vineyard is large it cannot just be anywhere because God would not want us in a place where we will compromise our faith in him just to occupy we're not we're not you know um, an, a matter to fill just an empty void we are to be that matter that when we go out to fill that void the space is consumed so let your light so shine before men that they may see your good work and glorify your father so everything that we do should bring glory to God if you are a wife in the home it should bring glory to God your husband should be blessed like a merchant ship you know he, he, he is well fed the children are taken care of because there now you would have done a work to ensure that you are doing the best that I can do as God would have willed it so to occupy in the home Till he comes. When he comes, he should say, well done, my good and faithful servant. It should not be a case where God is saying, what have you done with your talent? Mm -hmm. And so, he will still say that if we're busy in a work, but we're not about our father's exactly. business. Ah. Because you can be working, but you're not about your father. And he yeah. will still look at you and say, what did you do? But, but, but you never see me uh, uh, work hard. And never you were up. not about um, your father's business that 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 one didn't measure up mm -hmm. right. right so in 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 other words whatever era you're you're going to be in it should be that you're using your ability to build up the kingdom of god so if you're if you're doing a work and you find yourself building up this kingdom of satan are we occupying till he come no absolutely that's not. the thing and you know you can't one of the things to be careful of you know um michelle is that do not preach others in but um, you are cast away. away so that's <laughs> dangerous yes and of a truth what does it really mean to be about our father's business what was jesus doing while he was ah. here on earth right he wasn't just sitting lazy and if, if we look at it in the physical sense, remember, he was also a carpenter. Yes. So Jesus was working yes. while he was in ministry. Mm -hmm. So, you know, being about our father's business, meaning to occupy until he comes, we will be doing our work that glorifies God. And we will be in that field, whatever field he puts us in, because it's not about what I want, mm -hmm. not the best that I want to be but the best that God wants, wants me, me to, to be. be. So even if you're a nurse, you must be the best nurse that Therefore, God I'm wants you to be because you had placed you in this field so that you can minister to people. So whatever he would have placed you in, that is what you ought to do. That is why you are to occupy until he comes, not to do your own thing, occupy your own self. You know, because oftentimes we find that Oh, this is what I want to do. This is what 
I feel comfortable doing, but is that what God wants you to do? And we have to ask ourselves this very question. So the nurse who is earthly minded will be watching the paycheck right. Right. while yes. the patients suffer. So far. Right. But the nurse who is heavenly minded, mm -hmm. still a nurse, will give godly care. Right. Right. Might even convert a soul before they transition. And the prophet says, speaks mm -hmm. about that mm -hmm. from life to death. Mm -hmm. You know, and so this ought to be our focus. Well, yes. We have Proverbs 22, verse 29, which says, Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. You can't be wishy-washy with what God gives you. you know? mm -hmm. And so just because you wait until Jesus come and have a word, well, you know, Matthew, you know, because Jesus soon come. You have to be diligent and efficient in what God has given you to do. In Christ's object lessons page, 350 and 351 it reads the Lord desires to have in his service intelligent men men qualified for various lines of work there is a need of businessmen who will weave the grand principles of truth into all their transactions yes. and their talents should be perfected by most thorough study and training that isn't a wishy-washy Christian that isn't that isn't a Christian that don't really business about what's going on right, with their right, work you right. know mm -hmm. diligence if men in any line of work need to improve their opportunities to become wise and efficient it is those who are using their ability in building up the kingdom of God in our world of Daniel we learn that in all his business transactions when subjected to the closest scrutiny not one fault or error could be found he was a sample of what every businessman may be his history shows what may be accomplished by one who consecrates the strength of brain and bone and muscle of heart and life to the service of God Amen. That is not an example of a Christian saying, well, whatever you are, mm -hmm. God soon come. Mm -hmm. All right. and, in, and in messages to young people, that's another witness on page 147. It says, the Lord will cooperate with all who earnestly strive to be faithful in his service. As he cooperated with Daniel, there it is, and his three companions, Ananiah, Michelle, and Azariah, fine mental qualities and a high tone of moral character are not the result of accident. God gives opportunities. Success depends upon the use made of them. And so, there's no way we can be no earthly good. The openings of providence must be quickly discerned and eagerly entered. There are many who might become mighty men if, like Daniel, they would depend upon God for grace to be overcomers yes. and for strength and efficiency to do their work. So the question we must constantly be asking ourselves is how will I be able to build up God's kingdom in my career pursuits? And honesty is paramount. What again? Honesty, honesty is paramount. paramount. It makes no sense covering a fiend response, knowing that what is really important to you is money. And in this time when inflation is so high, mm -hmm. that temptation is high. Right. Mm. Gratification, self-gratification, yeah, and building up sense. treasures of this world. Where should our treasures be placed? In heaven. In heaven. Mm -hmm. Yes. Alright, so we can we can go to question three. Question three now. Are there careers that I should not pursue? Let me ask it again so we're clear. Listen again. Are there careers that I should not pursue yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there are in this time specifically more than ever yes. there are like several that you should not pursue you know um when you look at a makeup artist that's not a career you want to go into the body is a temple of god why would you want to add to it as if you think you can beautify it you know by doing that even you doing that for someone else you're saying that I have enough understanding and I can make you perfect. You know, not to mention the person receiving that is changing themselves from what God had made them to be, right? Not the sin, no, but the, that aspect, the body, the design, right? And how he has made you, he has literally shaped you in his own image. You reject that image to create your own. That's, a, that's a, an insult. That's, that's an insult to God. 
You know, so uh, nah. And yeah. another career that you can also look at is an actor or an actress. When we look at the this career, you realize that the entire basically the entire career is based on a lie. Yes. Yes. You realize that and and what what do we know? One of the commandments, you know, the Ten Commandments even said that we should not lie. Yeah. You know, false we should witness. not even bear false witness. So your false entire witness. Yeah, your entire yeah. life is like you're living a lie. So some persons to the point that they don't even recognize the difference between reality and that which you are acting mm -hmm. out. So you don't know yourself really who you really are. So you're be basically deceived. And you're things. deceiving mm -hmm. others and you're not truthful. So we as Christians cannot find ourselves in such career as acting and even a makeup artist. Even a comedian, when you look at it, it would fall under that category yes. where the person, in order for the person to make a living, they have to be basically telling jokes. And these jokes generally surround lies, right? Even some of the jokes that they're giving will go against, um, let's Your say, a person's belief, belief mm -hmm. right? Because I would have seen where this comedian, in order for him to basically sell himself. whatever he's giving, is basically putting down the Seventh-day Adventist church, yes. right? So when you look at these things, in order for you to make money, they're going to be surrounding a lot of things that are outside of your belief. And right? even, even things that might seem okay, like yes. probably running, mm -hmm. right. it's, yes. it's physical, mm -hmm. I am fit, mm -hmm. I eat right, I keep, and I'm just running, I'm just, I'm just an athlete, I just run, but competition. Right. Football. I'm just putting a ball in a net. But what does it do to the world? I remember I okay, I was a cricket fanatic at one point. <laughs> I played the game. Thank God for truth, huh? Amen. And I followed it. And I remembered I don't know if you know the name Sachin Tendolka. Yes. Um from India, but one no time way. he was about <laughs> to retire and, and somebody hung himself. What? what? Yes, it, it the, the person killed himself because he was going to retire. And then he played a little more and then he retired. But, but this is what these things do to the world and, and we should not have anything to do with that. Another thing is about the hotel industry. Mm. You know, some people, the young people, they go to school and they study. A lot of hospitality. Yes, yeah, hospitality. hospitality. Yes. And I've always thought about it and I say, I don't think this will work for God's people. No. Number mm. one, the hospi hospitality industry is based around Sabbath. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, and, and that's one of the first things they struggle with. Right. Saturday work. And, and number two, I want to ask, I don't know, but do you serve in, when in the hospitality industry, you, you get things to carry to the table and, yes. and, and yes. what yes. meal that was ordered was pork or mm -hmm. shrimp? You're yes. carrying that too yeah. to serve to, um, it, it, am I being extreme or doesn't mm -hmm. that fall in line that, wouldn't that affect your contract? Well, Let's I talk have, about me. Well, I have a testimony <laughs> on that because I was uh, in the hotel industry for a bit on the performance side as an entertainer. Do not. Do not go into that field of work as a Christian. At first, a few years ago, as an entertainer, which meant dancing and singing, and the, the way you have to present yourself to be an entertainment for the tourist oh, mercy. is not anything that God will smile upon. And even after I left that, I, was, I, was, I still did a lot of hotel work in terms of singing, and not just for the hotel, but businesses. And you cannot be a witness to a group of people who are there for you just for you to entertain them there is no avenue to witness if I stood up there and started mm. singing great is thy faithfulness I'd be like, Turn off. Mm -hmm. somebody's going to pray mm. yeah they they want to hear the cabaret songs they want to hear they want to rub up on their the the head of the man that's next to them they want to hear a love song they want to hear something that will make them dance you cannot witness in that environment there are certain environments that you cannot go in and say yeah i can i can it is not set up for you to witness and if you even try it uh, ex your excuse goodbye mm. so there are certain careers that you can't even and 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 pastor rightly said it, that many schools have that hospitality subject and they gear many of the students who they feel feel that can't go into certain fields of work into that because they, they don't really have the brain so they can work in a hotel or they live near the north coast so they can and they have no 
they put into uh, when I was there I have to say that it was almost like a, a, a fishbowl you're, you're closed off from the outside world and you just become right. this kind of figure just mm -hmm. for these tourists that come there's no avenue to say oh I can tell you about the about mm -hmm. Jesus mm -hmm. no you can't <laughs> matter of fact, no. matter of fact this is also a personal testimony um, as you know I'm a medical doctor as in studied and finished and completed but is there an issue there too and, and, and it would be yes, because Ellen White speaks about the fact of poisonous drugs, which, which is underlining that profession. Matter of fact, I was at a health center, and it was the day for the babies to come in, the little babies. Yes. And as, as a, um, a medical student, I, I was there injecting oh, the babies, right? <laughs> and, you know, babies crying, and they have to come, and I'm... I'm giving them the shots and a lady said to me one of the senior nurse um have you gotten a flu shot i said no um no and she said yeah ma, you, you can just take one and i said no i'm not i'm not taking any i'm not taking any flu shot i'm fine but something keep troubling my mind like you're not taking it you right doing? you're not going <laughs> to take this into your body but look at the little babies you're giving it and and it's a part of your program and then when you start working as an intern, someone said, right, just finish internship. You're done, you have the degree, you're a medical doctor. Just one year of internship. And I can't get over the fact that that's one year of a lot of putting in a lot of things, mm -hmm. in a lot of people. And how will my conscience be affected? I accept the medical missionary work and natural, right? Yeah, but I'm doing the opposite. It's, it's like tearing you. So Apart. some people yeah. will say we're extreme. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they'll say then, what can you do? Well, I'll give a solution quickly as we move on. I can now channel, I believe, the knowledge I have right. into medical missionary work and possibly even opening a sanitarium. Probably somebody that goes in the field of hospitality, they could probably open somewhere for, I don't know, food, cooking, the healthy meals. I'm just putting some solution because we're not just taking things down. What is the solution for the young people? What is the way forward? But there are some that you can't even channel. Mm -hmm. No, you're going to channel a comedian. And I wanted to add to what yes. you just said. Bart, going back to the Proverbs 22, verse 29. Seest thou man diligent in his business? If we are serious about our relationship with God, we will prayerfully go to him and ask him where we want to be. Yes. And if it is that we will be compromised in certain situations, we know. So even as a person who's in the performance arts myself and a singer I had to make a decision I'm, I made it to be honest I made it many times I went back and made it times but I was growing and I had to make a decision say no this being a dancer at a hotel that 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 that's not right I can't call my mother the first thing I said to myself my partner can't okay, tell my mother so, me. so that was my first question mm, yeah. maybe this ain't, this ain't <laughs> where I'm supposed to be you know this ain't where I'm supposed to be and even when I stopped doing that and I was just singing I remember specifically, I was on stage singing, I was looking at the audience, and I, and I was, I'd started going back to church, and I was like, but that couple there dancing, they're married. You understand? What they're going to do when, when I, you understand? <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, I'm singing in her body, my mind, I'm like, this ain't really a good so, witness. Yeah. I'm, I'm encouraging something that I really should not be encouraging. Yeah, yeah. But God opens the avenues. Why, when you are diligent in your business, whatever your business is, God will open the avenues. Yeah. And he will put you to stand before kings. Mm -hmm. He will right. put you to stand before kings if you are diligent with what God has given you to do. And say, Lord, I know I'm not supposed to go down with this path with what you've given me. Please open the path for me. And you follow yes. that path. God will surely bless you because it's for him. Right. Amen. I, so, go ahead. Yes, I just sure. wanted to say something based on these careers. Um, whilst many of us might not find ourselves um, doing these careers, but we endorse them because we will watch them on the television and we laugh with them and we support these sports events because, oh, these are our idols and we set them up and how they behave when you're watching these these athletes and stuff like that because you yes. idolize them so basically you set them up before god and and know um you realize the danger not even just being in the career but loving the career even though you're not in it so we have to yes. be very careful that we do not 
you know, say it, but we find ourselves indulging in yeah. these things. I'm glad I allowed her. That's a name <laughs> yeah. in a yeah. sure place. So that carries us to our final question for this issue and this one today. Does the time we live in dictate, strong word, what career I can pursue mm. as a child of God? Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. So indeed. One, 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 one from Councils on Health, page 506 to 507, it says, As religious aggression subverts the liberties of our nation, those who would stand for freedom of conscience will be placed in unfavorable position. For their own sake, they should, while they have opportunity, become intelligent. Watch this in regard to disease. That's what my, my street now, it, it causes prevention and cure. Sounds like the medical missionary work. Yes. And those who do this, they will find a field of labor anywhere. anywhere. There will be suffering ones. We've seen it. Plenty of them who will need help. Right now I'm reading this, it's appealing to my mind. Not only among those of our own faith, but largely among those who know not the truth workers are needed now as a people we are not doing have mercy on us one-fifth of what we might do as active missionaries if we were only vitalized by the holy spirit we need the holy spirit today there would be a hundred missionaries where there is not one but where are the missionaries and this touched me really reading this because if I should say Jamaica do we really have a solid sanitarium here a, a, a program of this nature I feel like a failure on that part but I'm pressing toward that goal but in these last days should we be more specific in what we choose and the careers yes um, so in these last days specifically you know, as you mentioned, medical missionary is one of them. And one of the things that even the young man should go after, and the woman as well, if depending on the field, is trade work. Trade work. Then, you know, being an entrepreneur so that you're not compromised by the systems of laws and policies that, you know, would, would come in at you. Because remember, even though you have established a business, you are at the head. And Christ being the head of you, will help you to make the right policy to govern the persons working under you. But if, if you find yourself in a government enterprise, then you're subjected to all sorts of policies that goes against what you believe, your liberty of conscience, you know, your body, you know. So you have to select jobs that are always in season as well because a trade work, you know, even with, the, with, with our last issue, we find that, even on the news, I heard the, the, the Prime Minister saying that they don't have anybody to go in St. Anne's, I think, to build this new hotel. They can't find trade workers. In Jamaica, we're talking about Jamaica can't find trade man that can do mason and carpentry. That is sad. And yet, look at it. That is a field that you could go. Use that to, to evangelize so many souls on that side. Right. Not compromising. Right. Not com ah. Because even when you look, what I realize that we're suffering in is that we can't find a place where we can get good plant-based meals. You can't find that, so we need hygienic restaurants, especially in Montego Bay. I have to search, walk about just to find a place that is basic. They're cooking vegetarian meals, not really plant-based meals, right? And the variety that you would expect and so on is not there. So the no, taste. and the taste, because mm -hmm. persons are going to be complaining about uh, vegetarian um, diet or not only that, but plant-based diet, that is not nice. The meal is not sumptuous or anything like that. So we need hygienic restaurants and persons who are able to cook good food to teach. So we need training schools too, right? And then we need servers. So when we have these places, then it's going to open a lot of areas yes. where we'll have different these, workers. These then we, have, we need treatment rooms right where persons can also come and treat the various ailments that persons have so there are so many areas that we need in today's day and age that will be able to what spread the gospel because 
when I look at a restaurant, a hygienic restaurant, you're not going to have it as a restaurant because that can also be an area where persons will come in and you consult, where they can yes. consult and say based on the area that they're suffering in, then you can they say, can okay, okay I can do a seminar. Mm -hmm. So you will teach persons teach there persons. about various, you know, sicknesses and how to use the food that they're right. eating, to right? And also we need farmers who are suffering as it relates to the different things that we can have. And how right? to plant them. It is how very expensive. Exactly. So. so we can do that. You can think about also greenhouse and go in that area to grow food and those things. So there are so many areas that you can basically do know that can advance the cause of God and that that is needed and not compromise your faith. I feel under pressure. Yes. yes. <laughs> I, I, that, that, that was a lot. And I, yes. as, as the leader on this minute, I feel under pressure. Like she was talking to me. These things need to be done. These things need to be done. But but that was good and that's yes. that's true. Um, yes. you know, and one of the things we have to remember is Joseph. He was able to adapt. Adapting is very important yes. if we look at the, his experience. And from his father's home to servant to Potiphar to right hand to prison guard as a prisoner to the right hand man to Pharaoh. And he used the gift and at every, every stage time. he witnessed. Mm -hmm. He used the gift God had given him with the power of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. in interpreting dreams. His position as a property manager in Potiphar's household prepared him to manage an entire nation kingdom. Amen. Amen. And as we just go down to the close, just read education page 137 to 138. That which lies at the foundation of business integrity and of true success is the recognition of God's ownership. The creator of all things. He is the original proprietor. We are his stewards we cannot forget and so even as we live in these last few moments and we know that the sunday law is coming we know that the devil is ramping us ramp, ramping up his attack in any avenue he can find we now have to dig deep and see god earnestly where exactly he wants us to be because where he puts us will be the right place it might not be what we fancifully thought a few years ago but right now, Lord, where do you want me to be for your glory right now? And we will be blessed as we bless others. It continues. All that we have is a trust from him to be used according to his direction. This is an obligation that rests upon every human being. It has to do with the whole sphere of human activity. Whether we recognize it or not, we are stewards, supplied from God with talents and facilities, and placed in the world to do a work appointed by him. To every man is given his work. That's Mark 13, verse 34. The work for which capabilities, the work for which capabilities adapt him, the work which will result in greatest good to himself and to his fellow men, and in the greatest honor to God. Thus our business uh, or calling it is a part of God's great plan. And so long as it is conducted in accordance with his will, he himself is responsible for the results. Amen. 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 So indeed, as we close this wonderful episode, we had really had a smart corner with the young people. <laughs> And, and the energy and the passion. We, we, we want to close on this final quote from the Zara of Ages, page 72. That's where it all has to end, at Jesus, in yes. Jesus, true Jesus. It says, the Zara of Ages, page 72, as Jesus worked, this is the standard. In childhood and youth, mind and body were developed. He did not use his physical powers recklessly, but in such a way as to keep them in health that he might do the best work in every line. He was not willing to be defective, even in the handling of tools. Mm -hmm. He was perfect as a workman, remember he was a carpenter, as he was perfect in character. By his own example, he thought that it is our duty to be industrious, mm -hmm. that our work should be performed with exactness mm -hmm. and so thoroughness, nice. and that such labor is honorable. The exercise that teaches the hands to be useful and trains the young 
to bear their share of life's burdens gives physical strength and develops every faculty. Finally, all should find something to do. There it is. That will be beneficial to themselves and help to others. God appointed work as a blessing and only the diligent worker finds the true flurry and joy of life and that's it that's the conclusion and a nail in a sure place so we are clear we are at the balance no extreme to the left and no extreme to the right now as we close any final point just closing up after the panel your final words statement from each as we come back to close all right so my final words to you know any youth out there who are looking for a career path a career path um, remember that whatever career you choose um, should be in keeping with your faith and your practice and that God would have given you a specific talent to you so you must use that talent um, to God's glory and to his honor indeed so if you don't know what it is pray about it seek him while he is near call upon him right now more than ever don't let today pass or whenever you read or hear this don't let it pass call upon him he will answer your questions amen and remember whatever area that you're going in remember that it should be the ultimate aim is for service to god and to others don't let it be influenced by money, by gain, by the love of the money, because we will end up finding ourselves down a path that we will end up regretting. But pray and ask God to help us to see what our talents and capabilities are. And once we allow Him to be our guide, I'm sure He's going to lead us on a path, right? Don't let the career decision or the career path that you're going down about self service because that is basically selfishness but let it be service to others which is selflessness Amen. Carrie Amen. I cannot add anything else to what they have said every young person wants to do something with their lives generally but we are the creation and God is the creator so it's best we ask him and whatever he gives to us he will not he will not go wrong Amen. Indeed. There you have it. That's a wrap on another episode of Youth and Issue with such an army of youth rightly trained. How soon the message of a crucified and risen Savior will be taken to the world. As we work, may we build up the kingdom of God because very soon he will come again. Let us pray to close. Loving Lord, eternal Father, we thank you for the opportunity to labor and be co-laborers with you. As we choose as young people, as we work, may it be to your honor and your glory. May we submit to you so you can guide us from time even into eternity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.